Hey everyone, welcome back to Prepper X Turing. It's Darren here, and uh, today we're just going to go over some uh, AP Physics 1 uh, Dynamics Forces Problems Reviews. Um, I'm, doing, I'm filming this at like 11, so there's not going to be any fancy cuts or anything. This is really just for myself, but I'm sure you guys could get something out of it. But yeah, let's just jump in. We have a friction problem. What is the minimum downward force on the box and the figure that will keep it from slipping? The coefficient of static and connect friction between the box and the floor are 0 0.35 and 0 0.25 respectively. All right, so I've highlighted the static friction here because we're gonna be using static friction instead of kinetic friction because static friction is the friction that is gonna take um, to keep a object uh, from moving when it is stationary, whereas, whereas kinetic is when an object is moving. So I'm just gonna draw out the free body diagram again, even though it is sort of drawn in the figure because I just think it's helpful. The applied force of 125 newtons, and then you have Fg. This is 30 kg, and it doesn't say frictionless, so I'm going to assume there's a frictional force. Can't forget about the normal force, about the push. Now, this isn't drawn to scale the vectors, but it is what it is. Um, so let's see. So we know that mu, which in our case is 0 0.35, is equivalent to F of F, or just the frictional force, over Fn. All right, so how can we approach this? Well, mu is 0 0.35, and that's equivalent to... Um, FF over FN. Now, how can we find FF? Because if we find one of these variables, we can find FN, which will be immensely helpful um, because then we can calculate everything in the uh, y direction. So we know that the, uh, the sum of all the forces, if the object isn't moving, sum of the forces in the x will be zero. And we have two forces acting, and that's going to be this 125 and the force of friction. So what we can do is write 125 minus F friction force equals zero. And so if we add friction force here to each side, we can see that the friction force will be 125. So we can have 0 0.35 equals 125 friction force over F of N. And I don't write labels here, but yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's just solve for this problem right here. If we multiply um, by Fn both sides, Fn 0 0.35 equals 125 multiply both sides by 0 0.35 and you get Fn equals, let's see here, it's going to be a decimal, but it's somewhere around this range, 0.1428 newtons. All right, so now we know the Fn, and so we can calculate everything in the y direction now. So we know that the force, the sum of all the forces in the y direction will be, let's see, we have Fg, which is acting sort of in the negative, but we'll just include it right now. And then you're also going to have this uh, applied force in the y direction. And then you'll also have the uh, normal force. Um, I'm not sure if this is the correct, correct um, sort of way to write this in terms of the symbols, but we'll figure that out later. Um, so how can we find Fg? Well, Fg is just m times g, so 30 times 9.8. I'm assuming the box is on Earth, of course. Um, so that's going to be, I'm pretty sure, 200, 294, 294 plus F, which we don't know, and then subtract the 357 newtons. And that is sum of all the forces in the Y. Okay. And so let's see here. If we have this problem, we can probably subtract F from here. So we have F is equivalent to 294, subtract by 357.1428. And that will give us negative F is equivalent to 63.28, divided side by negative one. So I think, yeah, I definitely messed up somewhere here, but it does work out eventually. So F is equivalent to 63 units. And that is gonna be our uh, answer. That is the applied force that we need. And I'm sorry if I'm not really explaining these problems. Um, I'm really just doing this for practice. And if I ever do make videos in the future where I am just, you know, much more well-versed in the subject in the form that I can actually teach it, then yeah. But let's move on here. We have a elevator problem. I think this is the easiest out of the three problems here. So Eric has a mass of 60 kilograms. Let's draw Eric. 60 kilograms. And he's standing on a scale in an elevator. So he's in an elevator, elevator shaft. And he's accelerating downwards at so 
accelerating downwards at, I'm going to say negative meters per second. What is the approximate reading on the scale? Free, bo free body diagrams. Okay. So you got FG and then FN. Those are the only forces because he's not moving in the X direction. So only the uh, Y direction really matters. So I'm going to find FG first. And FG is M times G. I'm going to assume Eric is on Earth. So I'm just going to say 60 times 9.8 which is, will be 588 newtons. So that's Fg. So we know what this is now, um, but we still have to find Fn because Fn is the reading. Whenever you have something that says approximate reading on the scale, the scale is going to be referring to Eric Fn. Okay, so we know that the sum of all the forces in the y is equivalent to ma acceleration in the y direction, right? And then the sum of all the forces in the y is going to be Fn, Plus, well, I guess, eh, yeah, so uh, the gravity will work in the negative direction. But this will be equivalent to this, and then we, we got the Fg. So this is sort of going down here, so I'm just going to move everything up here. Fn minus 588 equals, let's see, mass here is 60, and then we have the acceleration negative 1.7. Perfect. So if we multiply this out, we'll get negative 102 equals negative 588 Fn. And then we just add 588 to each side. And then we'll get Fn, which is our answer. That's going to be five, 486 newtons. It's multiple choice, so round it, that's going to be C. Okay, final problem. It's a system slash incline. I picked this problem because not only is I'll be saving time here, but um, I think it's actually a pretty interesting problem. So a five kilogram mass on a 20 degree frictionless, underlying this frictionless, that just gets rid of a lot of the complicated things of opposing the, uh, the uh, forces and stuff, but it's frictionless. It's attached to a light string that passes over a frictionless pulley. The other end of the string is attached to a 10 kilogram hanging mass. All right, so let's see here. We have to determine the acceleration of the system. They tell us it's a system. Now, what is a system? Well, you're going to be only taking the uh, external forces that are exerted on the, the system because, yeah, you have this tension here, but since they're the internal system, they're just going to cancel each other out. Um, so one of the uh, external systems here is the FG of, uh, I guess I could just call this FG2 because there's also... Fg on the 5, but that's on the incline, which makes it a lot more complicated. So let's just focus on the basics right now. So Fg2, that's going to just be 10 times the uh, assuming it's on Earth. So Fg2, that's going to be 98 newtons. All right, so that's one of our external forces. The other external force it is going to be Fg parallel. And because this is on an incline, you sort of have to draw this in, right? So let's just draw in Fn. That's going to be the normal force. And then, all right, you're going to have this right here. This is going to be FG. That's not a great drawing, but it works. And then you're going to draw in this line, FG perpendicular. Oh, God, I have to squeeze this in. All right, that's FG perpendicular. And then this is, oh, boy, this is not great, but FG parallel. And then you have theta. And there is a proof here. Theta is equal to this value right here. So you know that theta is equal to 20 degrees. And so to determine the acceleration of the system, we have to determine the acceleration of this force. Now, this force doesn't really have a name, except it does. That's going to be Fg parallel because Fg parallel, let's see, Fg parallel and Fg, uh, the force of gravity here is going to be the entire system. So the force of the system will be equivalent to the mass of the entire system. And then acceleration. So acceleration will be this way. I'll we'll just call this the start direction. Acceleration in the start direction. All right, perfect. So we got to use trig here. And the trig here is going to be sine of 20, because 20 degrees. And then we just multiply this by 49, because Fg here is 49. 5 times 9.8 going to be 49. All right, so 49, that's going to give us a value of 16.759. 
Um, so that's going to be FG parallel. Um, I know I'm skipping the units here, but honestly, oh boy, it's been a long day. All right, so we have 98. And this is going to be a uh, sum of the forces. So the 98 is acting in this direction, right? So we're just going to assume this direction is positive. Um, and then uh, this direction here is negative. So 98 subtracted by whatever FG parallel was, which is this value, is equivalent to the mass of the system and the acceleration in the star direction. Um, we don't know what the acceleration in the star direction is, but we do know that the mass of the two systems, which you can't really see here, but it was 5 and 10. 5 plus 10 is 15, so 15, and then A in the star direction, I guess. Um, so this goes over to... Um, all right, so it's going to be acceleration equals 5.160. Um, yeah. Sorry, guys, I uh, sort of skipped all the calculations, but I have a 15-minute recording limit on this, so I kind of had to go fast. Um, but yeah, determine the tension in the string during acceleration. During acceleration in the tension in the string. So whenever you're given one of these problems, you want to zoom in on one of the objects. Now, we could use the 10-kilogram... Uh, 10 yeah 10 kilogram here um but there's just more forces you have to deal with the force of gravity and so i just think it's a lot simpler to deal with the five kilogram one because you already have all the all the um forces known and it's just less forces to deal with so using newton's second law the force sum of all the forces is equivalent to oh boy now it's not letting me right okay there you go ma mass times acceleration so sum of all the forces, I should write sum of all the forces in the x as well, because it is tension after all. Except it's not letting me write what? Okay. All right, so it seems like uh, my computer is kind of broken, so I'm just going to rewrite this at the bottom because it's not, oh, oh, it's not letting me write. All right, so the sum of all the forces in the x is equivalent to the sum of all the forces. Oh, God, what am I saying? Mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Um, so, okay, so the, all the sums, okay, the sum of all the forces in the x direction that's going to be our tension, right? This tension is pulling the uh, five kilogram mass this way. And then our FG parallel, which acts as our negative again. This will be our positive. Um, man, I wish I had different colors, but you gotta get through all the content. So you got uh, FT here, and then we're just gonna subtract this by whatever we had as our FG parallel, okay, 16, 16.759. And that's going to be, let's see here, that's going to be equivalent to the mass times um, the acceleration. So this acceleration will go down here, 5.41607. This will just be at 16.759. And Ft will equal 44.67, and I will write the units as new ones. All right, so that is our answer. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys got something out of this video. Uh, I'm just so sorry. Man. This video was so rushed. Um, but yeah, I was just trying to get some last minute practice in. And um, I think overall, I think the concepts here are definitely the uh, trickiest part. You're not always going to have numbers to work with. So uh, my advice is just to try and work with qualitative um, num uh, not numbers qualitative variables in not only multiple choice problems but these short answer problems and just think through each of your solutions and think through each of your diagrams and drawing diagrams really helps and just breaking down each of the steps individually um yeah and in the future like i said once i have a better grasp of the subject maybe i'll actually make a flow balloon video where i actually teach instead of just you know, like just sludging through it um i probably got something wrong in this video um but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, yeah, have a, have a nice day.